Salut à tous et bienvenue dans The Joint TV Show, number one new for real hip-hop and R&B, and this is how we get down. Alors, il y a quelques semaines, je vous avais proposé un documentaire sur les protégés de Mob Deep, The Infamous Mob. Aujourd'hui, je vous présente le rappeur le plus réaliste du Queensbridge. Son nom c'est Tragedy Gaddafi, all the way from Queens, 96 building 6 blocks. Un voyage qui va vous plonger dans le cœur de Queens, là où tout a commencé à bas âge avec la découverte de pas mal de choses et l'apparition de beaucoup de vétérans que vous entendez et que vous ne connaissez pas. The Juice Crew, Molly Moore, MC Shane, Tragedy Gaddafi, Black Poet, ok, Cool G Rap, everybody et tous ces MC qui ont tracé la voie à toute une génération. Tout de suite avec Tragedy Gaddafi on The Joint TV Show, this is how it do. A world at war. Africa, Yugoslavia, the Middle East. But there's another war you don't hear about in the news. The war in America's ghettos. 96 buildings in the cribs go from A to F. My guns is lethal, put the nine to get back, make your whole chest see through. And cause you got shot, that don't make you mean. And I seen niggas shot. Over some cane, then I seen some get knocked for not knowing the game. Loaded glocks will be cheap among us In case niggas from other blocks tryna creep up on us We hustle hard on these blocks in these streets and corners Rep your hood, why? Cause QB made me Queensbridge the world's largest housing projects. Just across the bridge from rich Upper East Manhattan. 96 buildings, six blocks, one neighborhood. The richest legacy in hip hop. Home of Marley Mall, The Juice Crew, Nas, Mob Deep, CNN, and the realest rapper of them all. Tragedy. Fuck a battle rap, nigga. You could battle this gag. Get the slug press where your main organs at. Long as I'm living, I'll show you the meaning of terrorism. Come on. Like a nigga permanently scar locked in prison. Gangster, poet, revolutionary, criminal, paradox. This is his story. The story of pain turned to beauty. The story of Queensbridge. QB. Disco twins, right? Marley, the All Brothers, the All Brothers, you White, know what Flash. White Flash, you know what I'm saying? Elias, all them cats. Come here, yeah, Elias, Hot Day. Hot Day. Just the whole park would just be popping. That's ill. The mothers would come to the DJ booth, and then the DJ would be like, "Well, such and such, your mother's at the gate." And it's, it's chaos now because you're trying to run away so you don't get a beating. That's the shit that sparked me, right there. Just you know, being in the in the, in the park and just. Just starving, just waiting for your turn. Are you on the cry? Like, burr, when burr, was it my turn? Burr, burr. And then you get it, and then I was like, wow, hell? He was holding himself down with all like the old school rappers, like, got in the park jam and just tore it down. It's like, what the fuck? What happened? You know what I mean? It's like, this shit is like looking like a fucking a graveyard to me and shit now. Before, like, even the projects had so much life in it. The mid 80s. QB's own Juice Crew dominates the rap game, giving Queensbridge worldwide notoriety. Producer Molly Mall is in control. That was crazy important, especially for me, you know what I'm saying, because I'm from Queensbridge. We more amped than ever, you know, during that time. Kane, Sham, Biz, Craig G, Shantae, G-Rap. Juice Crew days, baby. Polo. They dominated, and especially with Molly Mall. Yeah, I mean, he dominated other areas like with Eric B and Rock Kim, you know. Molly was the fucking king, you know what I'm saying? Molly was a man. Everybody was chasing Molly. 
Yo, Ma, put me on, put me on. He wasn't really paying me no mind and shit. I guess he had mad motherfuckers running up on him, telling him they could rhyme and all that. I went to the crib this one time in particular, and he told me to come back in 15 minutes. I probably waited maybe 10 minutes, but it felt like five hours. He let me in that time. You know, he, got, he got like a certain style and a certain, certain flavor, you know what I mean? A certain little flow that's kind of hot right now. So I was like, yo, that's a go. You do a beat on, and I just got at that shit. And it was called The Tragedy. Woke up one morning, turned your radio on. Couldn't find your money and your brother was gone. Ran to the kitchen, all you found was a bone. You knew your brother's habit, couldn't decide on his own. Marlon used to live right in this building on the second floor, 4114. We used to actually wait for trash to come down so he can play the tape. Lost his wife and lost his friends. The way he started is the way he'll end. Using cocaine again and again. When we recorded it's a tragedy. It was like a demo from the crib. You know, he was telling a little life story. It was a hot joint. A little hot joint for hip hop, you know what I mean? <laughs> Before a tragedy, I was called, um, <laughs> I was called Jay Ski. <laughs> he was going by Jay Ski at that time. So I told him, don't you just turn it to tragedy. As a kid, the crazy shit I was doing, motherfuckers was like, yo, you a tragedy, man. My baby grandma? They used to call my husband the hurricane. He used to be a bad boxer, but see, I make music all the time. You get old, you can't box no more. Everybody would know when he started walking around, he had a drink. He knew he was going to terrorize the project. That's what the World Series on. That's it. Tommy Hayes and Cleon Jones. They were wild out and get drunk and carry on and you know the story <laughs> you know and then i gotta remove myself from the scene trash i was chasing everybody anybody that had something to do with music he was chasing Marley didn't have enough time for him i did your talent is extraordinary you know what i mean right. you're good you're ill on the rhyming tip it's just not all about rhyming you gotta know the business otherwise they're gonna take your money you always have old records and old tapes with beats and shit. so i would go there and like you know practice my shit. a couple of times he used to tell me about this kid he's always stealing and getting busted in the store so um I'm going to bring him home one day, you know, so you can meet him. I had motherfuckers running up on my mom's, telling them they was going to kill me. So my mom's was like, yo, you know, you, you jeopardizing your sister's lives and your little brother's life and my life. You got to go. Oh. Immediately, T, love, boom. No better stay, you stay here. You eat, you eat here. You family. After the river incident, finally Molly did something. You know, Molly was figuring, yo, T know what's good on the streets. So if he fucking with T, yeah, I'ma fuck with him. So in the way you kind of stole him from, from T. You know, I was going back to Molly's laying joints like Live Motivator. That shit was like, now I'm like 14, 15. They was on, uh, I believe, the In Control Volume 1. Tragedy elevates to the exterior. Imperial superior, your inferior. Intelligent trooper, I detect, but I design paragraphs like an architect. Like everybody like idolized him because he was the littlest, the youngest one out of the whole juice. Yeah, this is before a bow wow, crisscross, a little Romeo, you feel me? MC Sham, Molly Moore, Roxanne Chante, you know what I'm saying? Tragedy. It had massive. Massive talent, but he was like the one that stood out because he was so little, and then he got locked up. That slowed down his entry into the juice crew. It's a talent right here. This can't be the end. 